Hi everyone, I'm here at the Bible study. I hope you guys are having a good day. Let's learn together. Let's learn together. If you got any questions, put them in the comments. I'll try to answer them. If I got any questions, you guys try to answer me what you think the answer is or what you know the answer is. Because trust me, I don't know everything either. I read the Bible, but that don't mean I know everything, right? we'll try to help each other help each other let's learn together even if you like well I think it means this or that put it in there put it in there I would love to read it and we could discuss it I gotta check the comments and stuff today I have we've been so busy and I've been fighting this oxygen and being so tired I just can't stay awake and I just haven't had a chance yet, so I'll go through them today. But like I said, put them in the comments, or you can also email me prayer requests or questions or opinions, comments, whatever, to um, my email at missycrabtree at yahoo.com, all lowercase, M-I-S-S-Y. I need to check that today, too. I usually check it every day, but like I said, it's been kind of crazy here lately. But I cut out some stuff to read to you guys. This one is by Albert Einstein, and I just thought it was a really nice thing, nice saying. Learn from yesterday, live for today, hope for tomorrow. And I thought that was really good. It's really good advice. I got marker on your chair, so <gasps> or pen. <gasps> you are so easy to love. You have the power to make changes big and small. Remember, sometimes the smallest things are the biggest things. Good things are headed your way. Angels are never too busy to answer a prayer. A gift, which I believe God answers prayers, not the angels. And God can tell them to do something to answer our prayers. But I think all prayers have to go through God as to who you pray to. A gift, it's what you are without even trying. You are a gift. You do something brave every day. You might not think you do, but you do. You are headed in the right direction. Forward. Forward. There's so much you can do to bring joy to you. You can let go of regrets and move the past from the driver's seat to the back seat. What a relief. You can give yourself permission to dream and believe you have got what it takes. And you can decide that you are worthy of the best life has to offer. You are 100% lovable. And 100% to God who loves you more than anybody in this world. In heaven. You're his precious son or daughter, guys. You're the prince or the princess. God's son or daughter. If you're saved and everything, you know this. He loves you more than, like we're the only ones on this earth. Each and every single one of us, like we were the only ones here to love. He does. He's the one that can love that way. You know how you have love for your children? It's time to see how remarkable you are. You aren't typical or average or ordinary. You are you. And we're all different. We all have different talents. God gave us all different talents, all different special things to do. He made us all the way we were supposed to be. And hey, I don't think I have any talents. So if you think you don't have no talents, you're wrong. I don't think I have any talents. I never could think of anything I could do, you know. 
but God knows there's something. A shining light you are, a one-of-a-kind wonder, a force to behold, more precious than any gemstone could ever be. The world is more is a more beautiful place, and every day is so much better because you are in it. Thank goodness for you. Because remember, God wouldn't have put you here if you were not meant to be here. Remember that. There's a reason. You might not know what it is, but God does. Don't give up on yourself. All right, now I've got a circle of kindness for you guys. Let me get this uh, read for you guys, and then we'll get into the... Um, devotion and everything. You know before I even say it, dry mouth, I'm sorry. <laughs> Every day. All day long. Whether I'm reading or not. Okay, this one is by, let me just take this off. This one is by Samantha Dean from Canada. Pretty girl. Sometimes it's got their pictures in there. Thank goodness I opened the door for her. One day I went to the mall with my mom. There was, a re there was repair work going on around the building. As we entered, I saw a woman with a stroller ahead of me about to go through the inner door and decided to hold it open for her. Good. It was a good thing I did because the, di oh, sorry. Because the door was not attached to its hinges at the top and started to fall. They could have sued them for that. What if that would have killed that mother and baby? Or anybody? I locked my arms and legs and held on to the door around the woman had gone through the same door. She, she had to lock her legs and stuff around to keep them falling. And then she and my mom helped me put the door back. After she had thanked me and left my mom and I immediately went to the help desk and alerted them of the issue, thank God. But I was so glad to be able to help. Yes, thank God for you, put her in the right place at the right time. See, she may have thought, I'm just holding the door open for somebody. She was meant to. That mother pushing that stroller, it would have just fell on them, hurt them, killed them, trapped them. Whatever, because she's got the stroller, you know. How could she have held onto the door and the baby and everything, you know? That God put that girl where she needed to be in that moment. And thank you for doing the right thing. Because some people would, wouldn't have, you know. Ow! I ripped that off. Alright, and the next one is by Catherine Tyrrell from... Rhode Island. Sorry. Got my bracelet stuck in my oxygen tube. Just two little words can brighten someone's day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One morning I was shopping at a gift store and was standing in a long checkout line waiting for my turn. I was feeling impatient until I heard the exchange between the cashier and the woman just ahead of me. The cashier said to her, you are the first person today who has said good morning to me. That's sad. That's so sad. People think, you know, some people. People that work at like fast food restaurants or just cashiers in a store or wherever. We take those people for granted. They're people too, you know. They're people too and they like people to think about them as well. It makes them happy. I'm so excited that somebody just said good morning to her. Nobody had all day long. You are the first person today who has said good morning to me. And she sounded very appreciative. This really changed my mood and made me realize just how important it is to treat the person behind the counter with kindness and courtesy. When it was my turn, I made sure to also say good morning. Just two little words can brighten someone's day. I told you guys it can, and even if you wave at somebody and smile, 
that always brightened my day. When I was coming home from work or going to work and somebody driving by would, you know, how they had their hand on their steering wheel and they'd, they'd throw it up and wave, you know. It always made me feel better. I might be weird, but it did. And the last one is by Dace from Washington. Tacoma, Washington. I'm so grateful for good friends. Thanks to social media, I've made friends all over the world. Me too, right Layla? I got a friend, Bonnie Jean in Canada, and I got Layla and her son Emil who are in Finland. It's wonderful meeting new people. I never thought I'd have a friend who lived in fin Finland, Canada. I'm surprised I even got any around here and all alone. <laughs> Different countries, you know. Here I am, just a little fat, chubby person, not being able to go, don't go outside much, usually just sitting here all day long, you know. With, with nobody to talk to but Sherm, you know, here with me, and when he leaves, I'm just here, and it's nice to have, know you got friends, even if they're friends you can't see personally. It's still nice to know you got someone to talk to if you need to, besides your spouse, I mean. Anyway, sorry. One of my closest friends lives in Quebec, Canada. While I live in Washington State, we have bonded because, because of in many similarities, age, ethnicity, and the fondness for the books of one Canadian mystery writer is particular. My friend told me about another book that was a memoir written by a man who shares our ethnic identity. I wasn't able to find the book here in the United States, so she sent me a copy. What a lovely surprise when it arrived in the mail. I'm thankful for good, kind friends. Amen. My friend Bonnie Jean and I, we send stuff back and forth. Um, she sent me some really nice things. We both send each other stickers and stuff. She knows I love stickers. And I'm always sending her stickers or, you know, something to go with hers. And hopefully she likes what I sent her this time. Post office is really picky. I didn't know they were like that. I hope it got there okay. She sent me some really nice things. I got a a statue over there, like a plaque with deer on it. A real pretty deer, like, sculpture thing she sent. It has Canada on the front. I love it. I've never had nothing from Canada before, and she sent that, and I'm like, oh my god, I got something from Canada. And it's so pretty. And just the thoughtfulness, you know? I couldn't, I got a package, I'm like, what's this, you know? Who would this be from, the first time? I'm like, oh my gosh, Bonnie Jane. You know? I'm not used to like getting packages and stuff like that. And of course, Sherm, I don't think he ever has. It's ours together, of course. She sent it to both of us, but Sherm's, you know. Sherm has to have his name on it, you know. Long to Sherm. <laughs> so I make sure he gets stuff in the mail magazines and stuff. You know he's a child. <laughs> I sent some magazines in his name, got some address labels in his name that made him that. Okay. I always say when somebody sends stuff, it's for book us, you know. But, man, kids. Okay, so today our um, devotion is by Bargranda Lumpkins Walls. Uh -huh. Good luck with that, babe. I just put it on here. Just do this. Go down to YouTube and you can watch a video. Okay, um, and she picked out Ephesians 2, verse 10 to go with her devotion. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. See? Each and every single one of us, he has got a job for. You don't know what it is, but God does. 
the little things are sometimes the biggest. Remember that. Okay, so I'm going to go to Ephesians 2 and read that, and then we'll come back to Barbranda's devotion. Ephesians is very short. I think it's only about, what, six chapters? Or five. Anyway, okay, here we go. Made alive in Christ and one in Christ. And this will be Paul, the Apostle Paul speaking. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature objects of wrath, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved, and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith and this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Doing good work, doing good works does not get you into heaven. Remember, it is through Jesus who died on the cross we must be saved. God gave us that opportunity and Jesus done that for us. Be saved through Jesus and then do good works. That's the way you want to do it. That's doing the will of God. Therefore, remember that formerly you are Gentile, who were Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision, that done in the body by the hands of men. Remember the Jews when Paul was preaching to the Gentiles like Jesus told him to do, because Jesus wants to bring all of us together, everywhere together. They said that the... Um, the Gentiles need to be circumcised. And Paul's like, no, they don't. And if they get circumcised, then you won't be accepted because God has already accepted them and the Holy Spirit has already came into them just like the Holy Spirit came into you. And that was without being circumcised. So you can't tell them that they have to be because God has already accepted them. Remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel, and foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near through the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two one and has destroyed the barrier bringing the Gentiles and the Jews together. What's a Gentile? Anyone who is not Jewish. So we're bringing them all, bringing everybody together, Jesus did. Who has made the two one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new man out of the two, thus making peace, and in this one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. 
For through him we both have access to the Father by one Spirit, all of us through Jesus. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple to the Lord. And in him you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. Amen. See, whether you are Jewish or whether you are a Gentile, that does not matter anymore. Because before it was just the Jewish, you know, that were accepted. But not anymore. When Jesus came through and died for us, he brought us all together. That anybody who was saved through Jesus is saved, is a child of God. All the same, not one better than the other, no matter what. All the same, all love the same, no matter what. Whether circumcised, uncircumcised, no matter if you're Jewish, Gentile, black, white, whatever. All the same. God loves us all the same. Nobody is better in God's eyes than the other. Okay. And that's what we're talking about the children of God, the ones who are saved and, you know, the sons and daughters of the Satan. It's a different story. And Satan don't care about them either like they think he does. He'd laugh right in their face and torture them at the same time. Yeah. He would. Remember, he's the father of lies, Satan is. He's the father of lies. You can't trust him. Okay, so back to the devotion. Barbranda says, I often see letters after a person's name in an email or document that indicate the individual is educated and certified in a subject matter or profession. Some of the letters are familiar, such as PhD, MD, JD, and CPA, or like I was at one time, CNA. Others aren't as well known. In fact, out of curiosity, I recently asked a colleague what LPD stood for. Turns out it stands for Doctor of Law and Policy. Who knew? I can't claim any academic letters after my name, but that doesn't matter. Before I was born, God prepared special works for me to do in my lifetime. Do you hear that? That's each and every single one of us. Let me say that again. God prepared special works for me, for you, to do in your lifetime that only you can do don't mean like other people can't physically do it but he wants you to do this one particular thing the one particular job he has equipped me with the ability to serve and encourage people lead ministries and small groups pray for others and share my testimonies of his goodness and grace Perhaps Jesus has more good works for me to do, and I trust that he will reveal them to me in due time. One thing I do know, I won't necessarily need man-made credentials to do them. At the right time, he'll give me whatever I need to accomplish his purpose. Amen. And listen to this, you can put some letters after your name as well. Now that I think about it, <laughs> Maybe I can add a few letters after my name. C-O-G, child of God. S-B-G, saved by grace. And F-O-C, follower of Christ. Those are all the credentials that I need. Amen, Barbranda. And your homework from Barbranda is this. Think about the skills and talents you have, even if you think you don't have any like me you do how can you see them to do the good works 
or sorry, how can you see them? Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. How can you use them to do the good works that Jesus has for you? What godly initials would you place after your name? What godly initials would you place after your name? How can you use your gifts to do good works that Jesus has for you? If you do know what your talent is, like I don't know mine, but if you do, use it to help God's people. Use it to spread the good news of Jesus. There's some way you can in every talent, whether it's singing, working with people, anything, you know. All right, so now I'm going to do the animal devotion. Everybody think of their animal. The next Bible study will be in Proverbs. Squirrel. And I like Proverbs. I like them all. All right, Sherm said squirrel. You guys can say the same, of course. All right, good. This one, the title won't give it away. Because I did this last night and I still can't remember. Okay, the devotion is by Shirley Ray Redmond. The Bible verse for this devotion is Proverbs 1 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. They do. Let's see, and this devotion is called Fools Rush In. Now, I don't know what this thing is. The javelina, the javelina dashed in front of our car as we traveled through the Gila National Forest in New Mexico. My husband slammed on the brakes, narrowly avoiding a collision with the pig-like creature. Have you ever heard of this? Or do you know what it looks like? Have you seen this thing? Are they only in New Mexico? Are they around here? I've never heard of them before. But anyway, it's a pig-like creature. <laughs> Our hearts pounding, we watched as the animal thrashed through the underbrush on the opposite side of the road and disappeared. Bill looked to the right, expecting to see a mountain lion, coyote, or other predator in pursuit of a panicked pessary. When nothing appeared, we heaved a collective sigh of relief and resumed our road trip, wondering what had spooked that creature. Probably the car. That animal could have been killed, our daughter declared from the back seat. It should slow down and look where it's going. Slow down. Look where you're going. It's good advice for animals and people too. At the time, we had a middle-aged neighbor who could have, should have needed that advice. She was a troubled woman, recklessly making poor choices, despite warnings from friends and family members. Having recently divorced her second husband, she was already dating a man with an alcohol problem. Once again, she had dashed out into the road of life without looking right or left. We knew she was going to get hurt again. I, too, have rushed headlong into unwise choices, like accepting another volunteer position that I could not perform well because of too many previous commitments. The Bible is filled with parables about fools and mistakes they make. More than once, the Lord has brought the image of that careless javelin to my mind. Stop, look, and listen. It's good advice for all of us. Amen, it is, right? It really is. This one's by Benjamin Franklin. Wise men don't need advice. Fools won't take it. Benjamin Franklin. All right, guys. Well, that was everything for our Bible study today. I hope it touched your guys' hearts. I hope you guys have a great rest of your night. Let's bring those souls to Jesus and God willing. We'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible study. Bye guys. God bless. Please keep Jeremy Hughes in your prayers, guys. Bye.